Night, in the office, you can hear the tapping of fingers on the keys of a laptop. Dark-haired graphic design artist Eula constantly takes on extra shifts, falling out of his chair from fatigue. He knocks on the table realizing that he can't afford to leave his shift until it's over. From a heavy load, the artist falls to the floor, dropping all his working tools and dies. A huge and spacious forest appears. Eula rises from the ground and realizes that he has been reborn on the other side into a guard named Chen Fei. He is dressed very poorly, with a large bandage on his arm. The father of the guy, into whose body the artist was reborn, recently died while hunting from the paws of wild animals. Because of this, the young man who was very dependent on him almost went crazy. Hila realizes that the young man had almost no money, even for food. He paid with difficulty and all he has left now is just a couple of pieces of bacon. The artist begins to cry, because in his past life he constantly saved and collected a huge amount of money, but did not spend it on anything. But still, the reborn Eula rejoices that he can exist in a new world, because this opportunity is not given to everyone and stops whining. Thinking about how to improve his life, Eula looks at the boundless, blue sky. But suddenly the young man squints, he is blinded by a bright light. He does not understand what is happening at all, but soon a sign appears with the inscription, the ascension system has been activated. What kind of ascension system is this? He's not sure he heard it right. The guy begins to think that he has become the main male hero of a new, as yet unknown to him world. With great joy, he dreams of how he will now rule them and have a harem of a bunch of beauties. But the young man immediately realizes that all this is nonsense, gets on his knees and says that he is ready for anything. The system immediately notifies about the closure, since the selected user is not able to fulfill the requirements for its opening. He immediately rushes to beg the system not to close and asks to tell in more detail why he does not meet the criteria, and what should he do. The voice answers that it is necessary to end life as an ordinary person and prove that he can be useful to society. Then the system will be available in the next life. The guy swears at her, says it's all nonsense and asks a lot of questions. For such statements, lightning strikes him and he falls to the floor black as coal. The voice asks him not to use abuse towards the system and to read the user manual before asking so many questions. He agrees, because the system has its own character. The young man asks how his next life will turn out if he remains nobody in this one and are what he needs to do to make the mission considered fulfilled. Will he remain himself? The system says that his soul is archived, and when reincarnated, it will be able to return all arc data again, as well as repel all attacks in seconds. Eula understands that even in this case he will have to live in an unknown world for at least 50 years, and thinks about suicide or death provoked by external circumstances. Maybe this will activate the system. He asks what will happen if he dies due to reasons beyond his control. The system responds that any normal person has an instinct for self-preservation and if the user's actions lead to his death, this will be counted as a violation and activation will not occur. Eula realizes that he will not be able to provoke death himself, but he can make her come to him. The guy asks the last question to the system about who he really is. Eula from a past life or Chen Fei from a new one. It turns out that the real personality is based on the physical body, so for everyone now he is Chen Fei. The guy happily says that he will try to live the right way of life for the sake of his future. But immediately a red warning sign pops up and the system says that the young man should live his life with dignity. Now Yula understands that he will live without any desires, like the most ordinary person. The system wishes him all the best and asks him to contact with any questions. She says goodbye and the voice disappears into the bright light. The guy is left alone. He believes that even if the system is very powerful, it still cannot be perfect. He is Chen Fei now. And what does he care about his past identity? Finally, everything has become clear and Chen Fei confidently sets himself a goal to use his external forces effectively, meeting the requirements of the system. He goes out into a bright, green forest filled with the sun. An old and dilapidated house remains behind. In total darkness, on a small rock stands a huge ancient building of the sect of ecstasy. Tall, made in classic Japanese style with a red roof. Only one moon and stars illuminate it and the falling foliage of the trees around. An incredible number of people in black robes swarm inside the building, whose faces cannot even be glimpsed. They pray to the saint, ask her to illuminate and preserve the sect. A pink-haired girl in a provocative burgundy dress stands on a large podium that towers over all the other members of the sect, completely barefoot. She laughs insidiously, holding a purple sphere in her hands with long purple nails. The lady is very beautiful. She has unusual lilac eyes, long eyelashes, bright makeup made in red tones and long hair. She says that the sphere in her hands is an extremely powerful weapon that the ancient monarchs left behind. And with him, the sect can rise to the top of the best demonic schools. The enthusiastic crowd rejoices at her and praises their saint as omnipotent. Suddenly, white and red magical light magical stripes begin to swirl around the girl like a whirlwind. She struggled to stand on her feet, but the magic was stronger and someone took her sphere. 
The saint is trying to consider and understand what has just happened. At the very top of the building, against the background of the black sky and many shining stars, there is an incredibly beautiful blonde girl in a white revealing outfit. Her front hair is braided into small brown beads at the ends, and in her hands the most cherished magical object shines. She looks down with her big, bright yellow-brown eyes and sees a saint who recognized the abductor. She looks at the blonde with contempt and hatred and notices the artifact in her hands. The thief of the precious treasure tells her to catch her, if she can, of course, and defiantly shows the sphere that she just snatched right out of her hands. The leader of the sect orders her loyal subjects not to let her go far and grab the escaped thief as soon as possible. On the sunny edge of the forest stands a simple house with a thatched roof, hidden behind trees. A lot of light and fresh air gets into the slightly open window. Eula is lying on a small single bed in a spacious room, taking a deep breath and throwing his hands behind his head. He thinks about how difficult it will be to die, because the rules of the system are very strict and it is extremely difficult to circumvent them. He plans to think it over carefully later. Suddenly, the guy's stomach starts rumbling loudly. Holding it with his hand, he says that he is already hungry and really wants to eat. The young man understands that it is getting harder and harder to think because of the oppressive feeling of hunger, and such a death will be counted by the system as a violation. All his thoughts are occupied with only one thing, how to find at least some food in the mountains and wild forests, maybe it's already worth trying to go hunting. An idea comes into his head. He is the kind of person who spent every weekday the same way, at his desk, he has no idea, no experience in hunting. He will have to learn to live in a new environment, although it will not be easy. During the hunt, different dangers are waiting for you at every step. For example, you can crash to death or be eaten by a wild beast. The young man notices that at this rate, not even one week will pass before the fate of his late father Chen will overtake him. He gets up, but he can't wait any longer and, sticking out his tongue, rushes forward with great speed. Running out into the forest, he shouts that he urgently needs someone to continue his life. Then, out of nowhere, a wild boar with rabid red eyes and huge tusks runs out at him. Eula grins and naively anticipates how soon he will be reborn into some kind of king. Drops of sweat flow from his face like a stream, but he stands motionless with his hands at his sides while the boar approaches him faster and faster. It would seem that the end is already incredibly close, but as soon as the animal shortened the distance to the minimum mark, he immediately reflexively grabbed his tusks, and although Eula himself did not want to do it at all, he knocked the beast to the ground with all his strength, his hands at that moment moved by themselves. Bending into the bridge, the guy is madly surprised. Did the muscle memory of the real owner of this body work? Among the massive and tall trees, a dead boar is already lying on the grass. From such a fierce and strong blow, deep cracks appeared on the ground. The sky above the forest is blue, a little cloudy, but bright and sunny. The guy is embarrassed by the skills and knowledge that he got from the previous owner of the body and says that that person was a very strong and brave hunter. Eula clenches his fists and yells that the plan to die in the wilderness was the perfect opportunity for him to be reborn. Would he have to live in this world for another half century now? The guy wants a stone from the sky to fall on his head as soon as possible and break it. He grumbles, standing at his tiny house, as suddenly something very big and burning flies into it. Something flew into the hut and destroyed it. He doesn't understand why the stone fell on the house and not on him. What the fuck? Eula is surprised and screams because he has lost his shelter, but runs inside. Everything is broken. There are boards everywhere. The guy coughs because of the smoke and covers his mouth with his hands, but still starts to clean up, wondering where he will have to live after that. He is very surprised. His pupils become insanely small. Noticing that a beautiful blonde girl with bangs and in strange open clothes is lying at his house, the guy approaches her. Chen looks at the girl lying motionless. He sat down next to her and called her fallen from the sky. Next to her lies some kind of sword with a gilded hilt. The guy wonders if she could be the same cultivator from the legends. The stranger looks very good, but the young man does not understand whether she is alive or not. He slowly bends over her and begins to carefully examine her, leans against her chest, checking her breathing and notices that the heartbeat has stopped. It seemed to him that the girl had already died. Chen feels sorry for her, because she was very young. But suddenly the blonde gets up from the floor, and as if nothing had happened, looks at the perplexed guy. He gets scared and flies away from her a few meters to the side. Eula, waving his arms, asks an unknown girl not to misunderstand that he was looking at her body, because the young man just wanted to check if she was breathing. A stranger with a sad face says in just one word that she is in pain. You can see by the guy's face that he doesn't understand what happened. In the forest, the two of them are sitting on the grass and Eula tells the stranger that they will no longer be able to stay in his house and offers to try to heal her wounds with medicinal herbs, which he will immediately go to look for. While the blonde girl takes off her dress, Eula looks at the hut and realizes that he did not live in it for very long. The blonde replies that there is no need to go anywhere. The young man turns to her, 
freezes in shock, screams and asks what this lady is doing and why she took everything off herself. A translucent magical light with small blue light stretches to the girl's hand. Two small vessels with liquid appear. An already undressed stranger holds them and says that she has a healing medicine. But her body is very weak now and Eula must help her apply it to the wounds. The guy has a stream of blood from his nose from such a stream. He asks the girl sitting next to him if she is sure of this and hesitantly reaches for the strange jars. The blonde replies that cultivators don't care about such things and the young man tells her that she behaves too boldly. The girl notices that Eula is very kind to her. He begins to smear her with medicine very carefully. The guy's face expresses regret and pity. He says that the wounds on his back are very serious. As soon as he passes this incomprehensible tool over the cuts, they are tightened in an instant. The guy asks why this medicine is so powerful. Is it really the treasure of the immortals themselves? He continues to curiously examine the body of a stranger and notices a large scar on his shoulder, asks about it. But the girl evades the answer and telling him that it's a long story and begins to dress. She calls herself Cultivator Zhao Zuli, from the Naewen Sword School, while using a strange gesture, putting her fist in her palm. The girl finishes introducing herself and thanks the young man for his help. He tells her that he is the simplest hunter Yula. The guy points his finger at the sky and asks the blonde how it happened that she fell from there. Zhao, very alarmed, begins to tell him that a few days ago she found out about some secret plan that the ecstasy sect is developing, and in order to prevent her from fulfilling it, the girl decided to remove their magical protection, but she was noticed and chased to the very end, after she fell into the young man's house and destroyed it. But Zhao asks not to worry, because as soon as she returns to the sect, he will definitely be compensated. The guy calls the girl a monster, because she alone is going to go against an entire sect, but it also means that she is incredibly strong. The girl stands nearby, not understanding anything. Hila asks her about what she will do next. Zhao replies to the guy behind her that the plans of the demonic sect were interrupted, and she stole the artifact. But there will be other attacks soon, so the girl must definitely come back to report it. The girl's eyes widened, she suddenly falls to the ground, blood appears on her hand. Hila called out to her. Zhao leans on a tree and the guy tells her that the wounds are too serious and she will not survive if she continues in the same spirit. The blonde says that she will be very grateful to him if he can accompany her to the sect itself. The young man is very surprised and Zhao asks him to forget about the request, as it is too dangerous. Yula asks her how far to go to the sect building. The girl sighs and says in frustration that the way to her will take about half a month. The guy says that the sect will be looking for them all the time while they are on the road. Zhao agrees, it will be extremely dangerous and they will be very lucky if they manage to escape from their pursuers. Hila asks the system if death while escorting a girl would be considered a violation. The voice replies that usually peasants don't try to become heroes, but it's not against the rules if he dies due to an accident while helping other people. The guy grins, but Zhao doesn't understand what is happening to him. She approaches Hila and says that it was too rude of her to ask for such a favor, she will not force him to do something. The young man looks at her and confidently says that everything is fine and he will help the girl. She is surprised by his agreement. Hila says that Miss Chow did a valiant deed for the benefit of all ordinary people. And now she stands alone in front of the lion's den. Although the young man is mortal, but he knows what he has to do and wants to help in the fight against the demonic sect, the guy encourages the girl and says that they will stand together. She thinks he's lying a little, but Eula doesn't seem like an evil person to her. What's going on? But still, her main goal is to reach the sect, so the rest is not so important anymore. Zhao asks if the guy is sure that he will go with her. Laughing, he says that she needs to thank him, because they will be lucky. The girl replies that then he will be overworked, and the demonic sect will soon start chasing her and they should start acting as soon as possible. Chen asks to give him some time to collect things. He approaches the chest with a sign and tells the deceased old man that he will borrow his son's body and let him die, and then rest in peace. Miss Zhao and Yula set off straight from the forest. Voices can be heard next to a huge black column. Someone is shouting about a huge loss. People in black robes curse Xiao Zuli. Because because of her, a 50-year plan for the development of the ecstasy sect was destroyed. The pink-haired girl appears again. She stands in the winner's pose and shouts that she will make the cultivator's girl pay for everything. There are many people dressed in robes in the sect's premises. The saint shouts the name Zhao Quan to them. Her follower with a white headband and a cane says that Zhao Kirini is an elite. The pink-haired saint orders to track down the cultivator and return the magical artifact of the demonic school that she stole. The man with the bandage on his head tells the saint not to worry and to give him this task. Another sectarian holds a handkerchief in her hands. She warns a friend that Zhao is very strong and he will have to use all his strength without relaxing for a second. And he asks me to take something with me. She gave him the package. The man can't believe that it was given to him. 
This girl is a saint of the sect. She gave this thing to a man for temporary use. He thanks her on his knees. The pink-haired leader breaks into a grin and says that Zhao is now a dead woman, since she tracked her with the help of incense that shows the location of the soul. Now the blonde cultivator will not be able to escape from her. The night forest is illuminated by a bright moon. There is smoke in the air and bright sparks fly. He lies on the ground near the fire and sleeps, snoring loudly. A hand reaches out to his chest. Half asleep, he does not understand what is happening and asks who it is. He sees Zhao above him, she is very excited. The guy opened his eyes wide in surprise and blood gushes from his nose. It seems to him that everything is happening too fast and he is very embarrassed. The girl leans towards him and whispers in his ear, come on. Yula looks at her questioningly and the blonde replies that we need to be careful since the sect of ecstasy has already got very close to them. The young man immediately jumps up from the ground and asks where they are and how many people are chasing them. The forest is all in a fog. The girl asks him to be quiet. She says that the person who is following them is very careful and has not yet come very close. The blonde is still sitting on Chen and tells him that a certain magical item of the Witch Mountain of the Ecstasy sect was used by that pursuer. Therefore, when a person who has been replaced with this artifact is in a caustic fog, his secret desires and hidden emotions are awakened. Zhao looks around and asks the young man to pay attention to the red fog. There are many colorful clouds of white, pink and red shades flying around the trees. Yula understands that if all this is true, then he is now seduced by the fog, as if in hentai. Coughing, he remembers that sometimes he himself read meaningless stories, almost losing himself in them. But Zhao notices that the witch mountain only works on girls. The guy is very surprised by this statement. This cultivator coughs because of the smoke. She becomes very ill and falls down. Closing her eyes from fatigue, she says that she will be able to resist for some time. The night is getting darker, and the moon is hiding behind thick clouds. Yula holds the girl by her fragile shoulders. He stands up and asks what they should do now. The exhausted blonde says they have only two options. The first one is the main trump card, but it will be too risky to use it now, because this method can not only certainly kill the enemy, but there is a possibility that Yula will also die. The young man listens attentively to the girl and rejoices, because this is what he needs. But she says she didn't even think to hear an affirmative answer because a cultivator can't let the person who saved her die in this way. In the guy's thoughts, everything is completely different. He absolutely agrees to such an outcome and rejoices at such an offer. With distraught eyes, Zhao begins to talk about the second option. Yula must find that person in the place where he is hiding, and she will kill him herself. The young man asks if the girl wants him to track down the pursuer. The blonde explains to him that the object used by the sectarian helps to hide his presence. The girl looks at her trembling hands and says that now she is very distracted and she herself will not be able to find him in any way. And the young man grew up in the forest and this should help him in his search. Eula is distraught, but the girl says that this is a difficult, but the only way to save life. The young man answers with confidence in his eyes that he will certainly find the pursuer, but understands that apparently his time has finally come to die. The smoke increased. Sparks and flickers filled the entire thicket of the forest. A strange man with an evil grin and a black robe appears for a moment from behind the trees. The sectarian reflects on the robe that the saint handed him. It is great, because it can protect not only from spiritual search, but also helps to hide from the influence of all five human senses. Even if a man is touched, it will be impossible to determine his real identity. Hiding behind the bushes, he watches Zhao and Yula. Now he is invisible and this is his biggest advantage over them. The man decided to wait until the Witch Mountain would affect Zhao Zuli, and then he would make his move and immediately kill the girl. Meanwhile, Yula moves out in search of the pursuer. Hiding, the sectarian says that it remains only to wait a little. However, it would be very annoying to kill a girl in this way. If she could collect Yin and nourish Yang, it would not only be bliss, but it would turn into a very good opportunity for her. With Yin's help, she will also be able to speed up her process of becoming a cultivator. Moreover, the treasure of the ecstasy sect is now in Zhao's possession, and if the pursuer can still get the sacred artifact from her, he will receive quite a decent reward. The cultivator stays in a safer place, and the young man goes out to search. He begins to inspect the whole forest a little. The man in the robe does not understand where a mere mortal came from here and whether this guy can even notice his presence. Yula walks around with a stick in his hands and tries to get on the trail of the pursuer, and he believes that the young man is just making futile attempts to find him. It is unthinkable that the most ordinary person would find it, because he cannot sense any changes in the air. Everything is filled with red smoke, and the guy is getting closer to his goal. Hiding behind trees and smoke, the sectarian manipulates the air currents to confuse his rivals. He is to the south of them, but because of his tricks it seems that the man is somewhere closer to the north. This should confuse Eula and it will be simply impossible to find a man. He laughs, but one emotion after another immediately changes on his face, from fright to shock. 
some strange diamond-shaped crystal flies in front of his face. He puts his hands forward to try to detain him and screams in surprise. A young man's sharp spear almost flies into the sectarian's eye. A protective blue-blue barrier formed around him and the arrow broke in half against him. Eula opens his mouth in surprise. The sectarian says in fright that his plan has now been destroyed because the position has been revealed. The guy grabs his head with his hands. He does not understand how he managed to get into the man. A minute earlier, Eula noticed that the fog is coming from the south, which means the enemy must be there and if he shoots at the server, he should definitely miss. He pulls the bowstring and calculates that the shot will be made outside the range of Zhao's protection, so he started shooting at places not covered with branches and leaves. According to this plan, when the young man starts shooting, the arrows will fall to the ground and while he is picking them up, the enemy will be able to easily detect and defeat him. A scene appears before the eyes of a young man, as he stands in a huge forest next to an arrow, and a sectarian sneaks up to him and kills him. Eula begins to cry, because his plan was very well prepared. Why was the sectarian hiding in that place? It was his only chance. Now that the young man has caught him, Xiao definitely won't let go of the pursuer. He kneels down in sorrow. The guy screams. The man ran away right in front of his nose and disappeared again in a new unknown place. Eula turns to the blonde and sees that she is standing motionless in shock from what she saw. The acrid fog is still flying around. With surprise on his face, the guy asks why the cultivator didn't do anything. The girl shyly replies that her injury is still very dangerous and an attack would only make her worse. So she thought to wait for Eula but did not expect that he would find the pursuer so quickly. She grabs the worried guy's hand and asks him to do it again. The blonde, lowering her eyes to the floor, swears that she will not miss the cultist again. The young man hastily jumps away from her and says that he will do everything possible. He asks Miss Zhao to stay where she is and wait for him. Eula inserts an arrow into the bow and pulls it. The guy understands that this time he will not be able to hit his target so easily. A man with glowing eyes thinks that this time they will definitely not be able to catch him. He rushes into the thicket of the forest, leaving acrid pink smoke behind him. The moon illuminates the dark forest. Magical blue sparks fly everywhere. Mocking the young man, the sectarian says that an ordinary mortal will never guess that he has decided to return to his former position. He is all in anticipation. How will the young man try to get into it again? By the bright campfire, Xiao and Eula are discussing something. While the sectarian is diligently hiding in his former place in the thick grass, armed with a bow, the young man thinks where the pursuer could go this time. He's not stupid enough to just run around in a circle and return to the spending position. Eula is very excited. He understands that this time luck will not turn to him like that and the young man will definitely miss. The man waits with bated breath in his place, but then an arrow flies into him with a whistle again. The guy is shocked that he was able to do it a second time. The pursuer is scared, but Eula notices that he ran away again and disappeared into the forest. The guy turns to the blonde and sees that she is still standing motionless in place. He asks in surprise why she still didn't have enough time. The girl covers her face with her hands in shame and says that Eula was too fast. But immediately with full confidence in her eyes, she summons a sword, using the magic of her ring on her finger, around which purple spheres rotate. The sword rests its point on the ground, on which drops of blood fall. Zhao looks sickly and coughs, leaning on the hilt of his sword. She says she is ready, wipes the blood from her face and promises that she will not let the target leave again. And when Eula finds him again, she will immediately kill the man. The guy looks at the poor girl in concern, but resolutely grabs the bow. In his thoughts, he asks the sectarian to try not to let him hit him again. A pursuer is hiding among a huge amount of vegetation. He realizes with horror that Zhao Zuli's medicine is about to take effect and now is his last chance. The smoke is spreading more and more actively in the air. The man jumps from tree to tree. It doesn't matter if he lives or dies, but he needs to try to carry out his plan. Eula points the arrow up, thinking where should he shoot, and a man rushes into the air with the thought, where would it be better for him to hide? The semi-transparent shadow of a sectarian is visible on a tree, through a thick fog. Both the pursuer and Eula understand that it is very dangerous to hide and shoot anywhere. Witchcraft slowly begins to weaken and the man becomes more and more noticeable. The guy thinks he should shoot where the sectarian won't hide. The cultist thinks that he needs to hide where the young man will not think to shoot. The pursuer jumps, and the guy notices him, points an arrow and shouts that he is here. The man continues to jump, using his magic. This time the arrow flew just a couple of centimeters away from him and it was already too late to hide. He is convinced that the guy actually noticed him, but all this time he pretended not to see him. The unscrupulous young man was so obviously and meanly playing with him as with a violin. The arrow turns out to be right in front of the sectarian's eye and he prays that it does not hit him in the face. Eula was taken aback when he saw all this. The young man calls the man crazy because he just jumped straight to him on an arrow. 
The guy thinks for a minute. But what if the sectarian has the same system as him, which needs his death and that's why he rushed at his arrows. Everything around is illuminated with a bright pink light. The girl's eyes have already noticed the pursuer. The man realizes that Chao Zuli has found him. The girl rushes to catch him and screams for him to finally die. A fierce struggle begins between them. The blonde swings her sharp sword. In all this reflected light, only the cultist's dangling legs are visible in the air. A huge and bright pink flash of Zhao's magic appears before his eyes. Eula is mesmerized by the sky. Bright rays illuminate trees and plants throughout the forest. The man falls exhausted to the ground covered in blood. The young man runs up to him, calling him brother. He asks him why the sectarian kept jumping straight at the sharp arrows. The wounded man tries to answer, but Eula asks him another question again. Did the man really want to die so much? The shocked sectarian is bleeding from the head. The guy screams that he vomited blood through bandages. He says that the stalker is bleeding heavily and asks if he is okay. Eula grabs him by the collar and asks him not to die and say something, because the guy still has a lot of questions for him. Holding an exhausted man in his hands, the young man remembers Miss Zhao, asks about her well-being and wonders if it's too early to put away the weapon now. The girl looking at him replies that everything is fine and the ecstasy sect was just checking them this time. But in the future they will definitely send someone stronger and more experienced. Eula says that there are still many ways to reach the sect building and asks how the pursuers found out that they chose this route. Zhao scratches his cheek and confusedly says that there is something she hasn't told him yet. Due to her injury, she will die if they don't reach the sect within half a month. The girl says that there are only three routes thanks to which they will be able to get there in such a short time. Eula listens to her attentively. The blonde goes on to say that the ecstasy sect knew about this so they have no other options. Lowering her head, the confused girl says that if the young man regrets that he agreed and wants to leave, she will not blame him for anything. Eula gives her a thumbs up in agreement and reassures Xiao. He replies that since he promised to take her to the sect, he will definitely do it and will not refuse for anything. In his thoughts, grinning, he tells her to relax, because he will be with her until he finally dies. The girl thanks Eula and puts her hands on his neck. The young man does not understand what is the matter and cries out in surprise. Zhao pulled him to her chest so close that he began to make strange noises and gasp. The surprised guy bounces off the blonde, waves his arms and shouts to her that such actions were very inappropriate now. The blushing cultivator replies to him that the artifact which mountain still affects her. She asks the young man to leave for a while. Zhao says he wants to get rid of the witch mountain action. But it's not very convenient to do it when someone else is nearby. Pink remnants of magic are wandering in the forest, and the blonde is trying to get rid of the artifact effect. Eula asks her not to worry and says she won't watch or listen. Meanwhile, in the ecstasy sect, there are strong columns inside the building itself. A magical blue fire is coming from a candle in the hands of a pink-haired girl. A red heart is painted on her chest. Concentrated, she thinks that it was worth expecting such a thing from the elder of the sword sect. The girl regrets such a vain loss of a precious artifact. The lady looks at the map of the forest area with a plan and in her thoughts asks Zhao Zuli if she can just as easily defeat the other messengers that are waiting for her on the rest of the way. The bright sun illuminates the city, the queue at the fortress through which it is entered is growing. There are guards nearby, and large red houses behind the fortress itself. Although Zhao Suli looks like a naive girl, but behind her lies a huge and many years of combat experience. There is a sign on the wall with the inscription Jinan. The cult of pleasure did not send its murderous followers after Zhao and Chen and they calmly reach their new goal. They walk slowly through the beautiful streets of the city and the young man asks the blonde why they had to stop in Jinan if they have to go to the cult of the Sword of Wen. The girl replies that their people are guarding the entrance to Sidon. Looking at the map, she explains to the guy the location of their goal. The Sword Cult is located in the vassal district of Sidon. Jinan is a city on the western border of Sidon, protecting the entrance. Eula enthusiastically looks at the map with his hands folded to his shoulders. The girl explains that she is injured and they will have to pass Jinan first in order to successfully reach Sidon. The map shows various paths, forests, houses and roads of the city. The young man replies that he understood her and asks if the sect of ecstasy will dare to pursue them further when they have already got so close to the cult of the sword. In the thoughts of the young man, if this does not happen, then the blonde will have to kill him. She says that the cult of the Sword of Wen is the largest school, and therefore the cult of ecstasy definitely should not challenge them. But the demonic academy also does not miss its chance to become at least a little stronger. Angrily, Zhao says that she is sure of sending at least a few more mercenaries. The young man rejoices and claps his hands, because it is becoming more and more dangerous. He is in anticipation of the next antics of the ecstasy sect. His body already craves their sword. It's the height of the day in the city, but there are few people on the streets. Only the leaves quietly fall from the crown of the trees to the ground. In a new place, time passed very quickly and evening came. 
The moon is shining, and residents have already turned on their lamps in their houses. The silhouette of a girl is visible behind a transparent pink screen. Eula is standing on his hands and blood is flowing from his nose like a stream. For safety, the travelers rented one room for two, but no one felt safer from this at all. A blonde with a serious face jumps out from behind a screen without clothes and with a towel in her hands. She shouts that the lady of the ecstasy sect has already got very close to them. From such a picture, the young man became even worse. He falls to the floor at Zhao's feet. His eyes darken again and he says that the cult somehow quickly found them. The girl seriously replies that she feels them. A towel wraps around her bare body. The blonde walks away. And Eula thinks how receptive this girl is. Voices can be heard in the building. They say that their hatred for Zhao Suli is boundless and today they will take revenge on her. In the hands of the cultivator, a magical purple pink sphere is formed. She calls the mother of five poisons to herself and pronounces the names, Lin Shengu, a thousand fragments. The faceless monk, Wu Ziangxi. The girl quickly pulls the sword out of her magic ring. Eula is standing behind her scratching her cheek and does not understand what is happening. The girl shouts for Zai Yingpai and Sen Waishi to show up faster. The guy is wondering if the man's name is really Sen Waishi. Yula is surprised how Zhao could have learned this by ear. He thinks cultivators are really amazing. Suddenly the window opens with a bang. The girl shouts to Yula to be more careful. Meanwhile, the guy is standing with a small stool in his hands, his mouth open. Three men and an old woman are standing in the window. In front of everyone is a woman with gray hair and a stick in them, wrinkles on her face and a mouth full of scars. She is dressed in a red and green kimono, and holds a wooden cane in her hands. Behind her are three other, younger men than her, one with huge red beads around his neck, and the last one is not visible at all because of his height. Here the wanderer gives out that it is a great honor for them, because Zhao still remembers the names of these four after such a long time. She laughs and remembers how the girl killed every poor person. They never forget those who hurt them badly. Zhao asks sarcastically if those people were really so poor and says not to make her laugh. The men are coming out. Now you can see them all. The third refuses an old man in a blue kimono and with a silver headband on a bun gathered on his gray head. Mother of five poisons poisoned the river to stop the plague. The faceless monk killed ordinary people and cut their faces. Lin Shengu ate children to cultivate his soul and Zai Yangpai who used ordinary mortals as food for his shadow monsters. Zhao points his sword at them and says that they are all sinners. The guy swings the stool. He is very surprised and repeats the words, Plague. Cannibalism. There was a tap of a cane on the floor. The old woman screams with a sinister face that mortals are absolutely nothing compared to them. Cultivators. And she doesn't care what Zhao Suli is talking about. She won't let her go anyway. The blonde asks him why the old lady then mumbles and challenges her to a duel. The girl begins to pull off her towel when suddenly a guy armed with a stool rushes at the sudden guests with screams, wishing them dead. The towel lands right on top of him, he gets out, and Zhao is standing behind him. He tells her that you can't undress when you want, because they can be kicked out for this, and the girl is still injured. The guy resolutely volunteers to fight in battle instead of her, but before that, he takes a blanket and shyly covers her shoulders, asking her to get dressed. The girl agrees. An old lady in a green kimono leans her hand to her chin and asks if they will really fight in the very center of Jin. Excitedly, she says that if everyone who is here uses force at the same time, then a huge number of the most ordinary people will suffer, it is unknown how many of them will die. The old lady laughs, Zhao drooped at her words, but then the young man asks if she is deaf. After all, he has already said that he will fight instead of the blonde and points at himself with his hand. The mother of five poisons squints and asks how the girl will be able to protect the mortal next to her. Hila tells him not to worry about it. Zhao calls everyone who came shameless and angrily asks what they want from her. An old lady with a stick in her hair answers her that everything is very simple. If the girl passes their test, then they will never attack her again. Her face lights up ominously. The old lady says that if they sign a contract and use the technique of connecting souls, then whoever breaks it will immediately die. Zhao and Yul are standing in front of four men. The old lady asks the girl what she thinks about the contract. She grins because their foursome is not even a match for this blonde. But with this contract, everything that happens will be decided by them. The mother of five poisons leans on her cane, pleased with her plan. Yula understands that this is all a trap and even an idiot understands it. He touches his hair and wonders how these guys could fool anyone, because all their intentions lie right on the surface. Zhao replies with a serious face that she agrees. The young man vomits blood from this. He turns to her, and pointing at them with his finger asks them to think better about the proposal, saying that they definitely should not be trusted, so it's impossible to agree so easily. Zhao turns around and says with an innocent face that he knows about it, but does not want Yula or the residents of the city to die. 
The blonde struck the young man with her words. He freezes in surprise and says that's what he expected from such an experienced fighter. A sign appears behind the cultivator, on which it says, The contract is today. Zhao Suli signs an agreement with the mother of five poisons, a thousand pieces, a faceless monk and Zai Yangpai to create a test. If Zhao Suli passes all four, the test makers will never attack her. If the contract is violated, the soul of the guilty person will be destroyed. Signed by Lin Sheng, Kandu, Sen Waishu and Java Zayangxi. Magical golden streaks of light fly out of the blonde's hand. Yula is worried. The old lady grins, but then the young man asks everyone to stop. The opponents are alarmed, and the guy tells them that neither the test nor the rules were written in the contract. He asks what will happen if one of the tasks is to kill the head of her clan, and what will happen if the poison does not kill her or the results do not suit the men with the old woman, and they will start blackmailing people with their lives. Eula is very angry and swings his fist. He yells that this contract is full of holes and this scoundrel just to get Zhao to sign it. The young man breaks the sign with the contract with his hand. He knows that he has to die, but he can't stand aside when a girl is so cleverly fooled. And if the contract is really so necessary, then Eula wants to make sure that it is well written. The mother of five poisons says with displeasure that the guy is an ordinary mortal. How dare he do that at all? The young man points at the rival and shouts that the girl is scared. And the old woman threatens people. The mother of five poisons screams not to be listened to because the guy just spoils her reputation. Zhao gets into the argument with a sword in her hands. She asks if the sorceress has a reputation. Eula gives them the middle finger. The girl says that the opponent should change the contract or fight with her because she is ready for any consequences. They leave to discuss not words. They can't fight because they will lose. The old man in the blue kimono says that maybe it will be possible to change the contract and still defeat the cultivator. The man in the beads says that you should not be afraid. After all, if you don't try, you won't know. The mother of five poisons hits him in the chest and shouts that none of them wants to die. Addressing his rivals, he says that since they are so excited, the contract will be rewritten. Eula replies that some amendments need to be made. The test should not exceed the skill. And when passing the test, no one should die or suffer much. The young man understands that their confidence indicates that they have seriously prepared. Otherwise Zhao would not have had to sign a contract. The last condition is departure to uninhabited lands in case of successful passing of the test, so that their rivals can no longer interfere in the affairs of ordinary people. The guy doesn't want to touch the main component of the test to help Zhao and die if necessary. The old lady smiles. She has already realized that their plan has been figured out and Eula wants to dissuade the girl from signing the contract with all her might. What to do about it? She will have to agree to its terms. She will not pass the test anyway. Eula says that he wants to put his name next to the blonde's name in the contract. The mother of five poisons agrees, but warns the guy that he himself decided to intervene. He will regret it, because he is an ordinary person, and the guy thinks he'll regret it if he doesn't sign this contract. A white-haired man utters some kind of creepy spell. A magical golden light gathers around and a sign with a new contract appears. Today Zhao Suli and Yula sign an agreement with the mother of five poisons. A thousand pieces, a faceless monk and this Pai about creating a test. If Zhao Suli and Yula pass all four, the test makers will never attack them. If the contract is violated, the soul of the guilty will be destroyed. Terms of the contract 1. The test does not exceed the skill of the four. 2. The test must be completed without death or injury. 3. When passing the test, the four must immediately go to the west and stay away from people for 10 years without contacting the outside world. Signed by Lin Sheng, Kandu, Sen Waishu and Java Zayangxi. Zhao shouts to the young man that he shouldn't do it. He turns to her and with a smile says that since the opponent signed it together, then they should do it. The girl is confused. Eula understands that this is a death sentence, no other way. He must sign it. The guy bites his finger and writes the names on the contract in blood. The blonde is surprised that they have become partners, because she has always worked alone, and Eula is just a mortal, but wants to fight with her side by side. Her hand reaches for the contract and she signs it with her own blood, promising to protect the guy if he wants it. Eula sits on the floor in front of the competitors, asks what kind of tests, and asks to show them. The old men look at each other and say that they are intended for cultivators, so this does not concern a mortal. The guy replies with satisfaction that his name is also on the contract and he should be able to pass it and reminds them that they wanted to fool Miss Zhao, so he will help her. Or are the rivals just afraid of defeat? The cultivator is pleasantly surprised and pronounces the name Eula. The old lady grabs the beard of a man in a blue kimono and says that the guy is very self-confident. Then he starts yelling that if he wants to die, he can go to him. Her hand is still on the beard of a friend and he asks why she is pulling him. Poisoned wine is the name of the test of a man in a green kimono. There are five buckets of water on the floor. To pass the test, you need to drink three glasses. A man with a beard complains that it hurts because of an old lady pulling on it. 
but he says his test is much easier. You'll just have to play with it. The man in the beads is talking about the debate. A wolf with bright red eyes appears and the last opponent sets a condition to hold out next to the shadow beast for an hour and a half without dying. An old lady with a stick in her hair tells them to choose a test. Hila reaches out to choose, but the girl stops him and thanks the young man, pulling his hand away. She says it's a survival game and asks to let her deal with it herself. The guy says that he tried very hard and asks not to ruin his plans. Zhao worries and blocks the path of the young man with his hand. She says that his body is too weak, so the young man may die, and the cultivator cannot allow this. He looks at her with displeasure, but abruptly remembers that he almost forgot about the rule. If the player tries too hard to die, the system will count it as suicide and will not give him any power. The guy thinks and turns away. In his thoughts he asks the system to wake up, and the rivals look at him in bewilderment. The system begins to appear. After a small download, a blue monitor hangs in front of Eula. He tells her that he has decided to sign a contract to take the test and asks what will happen if he dies during it. Will it be considered suicide? The voice of the system answers him that such a case will be counted as a heroic act and if death is not predetermined, then it does not count as suicide. The young man rejoices and thinks how he can convince Xiao Suli now. He resists, but understands that apparently he will have to use it again. He reproaches the girl, accusing her that she, like the opponents, considers him just as useless and thinks that he will not be able to pass the test. The girl looks at him in confusion. Eula continues to speak, turning away from her. He thought that during all this time they became friends. The guy even signed a contract for Zhao, but she still perceives him as a mere mortal. The girl utters the name Eula in confusion. Old people are sitting with popcorn and wearing glasses, watching the whole scene. The young man clenches his hand into a fist, turns to the girl and with a sweet face says that he is not going to listen to her. Zhao stands in a stupor. The old people also do not understand what has just happened. But then the cultivator starts shouting at him not to approach her and tells him to go take the test. Eula makes a strange face again and agrees. Excellent performance. The guy chooses the mother of poison's test. Of course, he should choose the glass where the wine is poison. This is a quick and effective way. If not for the rules of the suicide system, the young man would have drunk everything long ago. The opponent uses magic to create a test. Mugs with liquid appear on the table. The mother of poison says that you need to choose a glass from each row. After drinking three the test will be passed. According to the rules, not all glasses are poisoned and you need to determine if there is no poison using your ability. Eula looks at the glasses and thinks to choose at random. He will not be able to pull out all the unedited ones. He looks closely at the liquid and remembers how he hit the pursuer three times in a row. You need to be more careful. The first three look like ordinary water and the young man does not see any differences. He takes the glass in his hands and tastes the contents. It tastes no different. Eula looks at the second glass. He looks suspicious. After he tries the liquid from there, he feels sick, drooling from his mouth. His legs and arms are numb and his body is frozen in one position. Suddenly he falls off the chair to the floor. A blonde runs up to him and asks if he's okay. Lying on the floor unable to get up, the young man with the locks replies that he is fine. The old man is surprised by such a reaction after just one sip. Zhao almost forgot that she is not in her clan and asks the young man to surrender now. He gets up, his whole body is shaking, but the stronger the poison, the easier it is to die. The guy replies that he's fine, but they tell him to wait. He asks for a third glass, but remembers that he didn't finish the second one. Drops of liquid fall on the table, but then Yula notices a mug with a strange, smoking substance. His gaze fell right on her and he picks her up, glad that he found the remedy. In one gulp, the guy confidently drinks all the contents. Hila prays to die and waits for the poison to take effect on him. After a while nothing happened and he calmly opens his eyes. Yadov's mother tells him that the young man is smarter than she thought. He realized that 10,000 dry trees is made of a harmless plant, but caustic. She asks to tell who taught him to recognize poisons. The young man is angry. No one trained him. As a plant can be caustic and harmless at the same time, this is simply impossible. Hila doesn't understand the rules of this world, don't they exist at all? The mother of five poisons asks why the guy is silent, maybe he doesn't want to harm the mentor. The opponent asks not to worry, because she will not touch him if he says. Hila exhales and replies that it's not that. He was misunderstood, because he has no teacher and he has never studied poisons. The mother of five poisons decides not to ask further and to continue the test. In the first round, the opponent made the safe option look the most dangerous. Hila can't believe that that swill didn't kill him. There are new glasses on the table. In the second three, the guy decided to try the contents of the first mug, the most harmless in appearance. In his thoughts, the guy hits himself on the head. He completely forgot that you can't choose the first glass. The old lady would definitely not use the same method as the first time. 
everything should be different and if the young man chooses the most dangerous at first glance, he thinks about it and stretches his hand towards the black liquid. Stunned, he grabs his left hand. What if the enemy anticipated this? Maybe the old lady planned it that way and poured it into the most ordinary muck. But then the guy stops. He thinks that the mother of five poisons could have foreseen such an outcome. Hila won't be able to choose between the first and the third and so she poisoned the second. He's shaking all over and just like a madman, his eyes bulging, shouting that he can't stand this. Where did she pour the poison? He cries and tries to choose. One of the glasses. Maybe it's a purple liquid in the middle. The guy asking for help. He chooses purple water, although there may be poison in the third glass. The opponent frowns. The guy takes a glass with a black liquid. The poison should definitely be there. The old lady only frowns harder, so the young man has no doubt that it is in this glass that the poisoned liquid is. He found a glass without poison and now he definitely won't drink from there. Since the other two are poisoned, as he believes, it does not matter what the young man will drink. Eula takes a glass and drinks from it. Laughing, the guy thinks how good it was that he was careful, Eula almost chose the wrong glass. After finishing his drink, he holds the mug in his hand. The mother of five poisons says that how good he is is very curious. The young man was able to identify the only glass in which there is no poison. She praises the master who taught Eula. The guy's lips are pursed, he's upset. Zhao is standing next to her. She does not understand what is happening to the young man. He begins to cry and ask himself why this is happening and how this is possible. Hila furiously shouts at the mother of poisons, because she was frowning all over as if she was not herself. The old lady decided to play dishonestly. He says that the opponent must be more careful, otherwise he will inform on her. The mother of five poisons starts shouting at him in response. The young man thought too long and pissed her off, that's all. If it wasn't for the cultivator behind his back, she would have already killed him three times. Zhao stands behind Eula and cheers him on. She says that the young man knows a lot about poisons. The girl can't believe that he almost passed the test. The inspired cultivator supports him, saying that she believes in him because there is only one cup left. But Eula doesn't need encouraging speeches. He becomes even more gloomy than before. The girl looks at him in bewilderment, with sadness on his face and tears. O says that he will try, breaking the cup. Zhao excitedly asks if he is okay. The guy understands that the more he thinks, the worse it is for him. Mugs with multicolored liquid reappear on the table. He decided to just drink from any cup and chose the green one. A satisfied young man, after drinking, thinks that the contents are very sweet, like non-foo mineral water. His face is writhing. Apparently he has chosen a glass without poison again. But then his eyes widen, and the guy vomits blood. A worried girl runs to him and calls his name. The old lady poking into the air with a stick rejoices and laughs. She screams that this time Eula will definitely die. The young man rests his hands on the floor, lowering his head down. Zhao is standing next to him. She points to the mother of five poisons, who is standing in front of her and asks what she did to her assistant. The old lady replies with a grin that even though he had chosen correctly before, he would have made a mistake with the last glass anyway, simply because there was poison in them all. The opponent breaks into an evil grin. She laughs so hard that you can see all her sharp teeth. First, Eula chose the first glass, then the third, and now the second. But only after drinking the contents of each glass, he will be able to remove all the toxins. All the mugs that were offered to choose from in the test are placed on the table. Drinking everything is the only way. The old lady sits down on the floor in front of the victim and says that he has only two hours left to live. The guy gets up, his hair is disheveled. All the capillaries have burst in his eyes, his chin is scarred, and sweat is flowing from his face. He asks if it was definitely poison, because he doesn't hurt anything. That is, he is still in the ranks. Zhao does not understand what the system has to do with it. The mother of five poisons shrugs it off and says with satisfaction that this is how the young man's body fits the last hours of his life. Eula happily shouts that it's great. He waited so many days for the opportunity to die. The old lady is surprised and does not understand why the guy laughs after drinking poison. But her attention immediately switches from the scent guy to Zhao Suli. The mother of five poisons reminds the anxious girl that she needs to take three more tests, and she is left alone. But then Eula covers up the conversation and asks them not to be arrogant, because he is actually still alive. The guy looks like a madman. He shows the middle finger and says he has two more hours, so he's going to take the second test, namely a board game. The cultivator looks at him in surprise. Eula had planned all this just in case, so that he would definitely die. This should squeeze all the juice out of him. Night has already fallen outside. Clouds envelop the bright moon and stars. In a small room, the opponents placed a board with white and black pieces to play and pass the second test. They quickly rearrange their chips and shout incomprehensible words. Ora ra and muta muta. The young man reaches out to put his black chip on the field. Realizing with pleasure and a smile on his face that he will die soon, Eula feels it. 
The old man in the blue kimono also makes his move. The guy's thoughts are filled only with his heavy body. It seems to him that he should soon ascend to heaven. The opponent opposite him thinks, scratching his beard, opens one eye and asks the young man not to overwork himself because he will win anyway. Yula excitedly shouts like hell, he will show how the champions play games. The guy makes a move, raises his hands up and tells the old man to look at his two-way thunderbolt defense. The young man's eyes widen, and the pupils become very narrow. The chips fall one by one from the playing table to the floor. He starts screaming furiously and grabbing his head. He becomes very ill and groans in pain. The guy sits on his knees in the middle of the room, holding his head and shaking all over. Zhao calls him by name and asks how he is. Had the poison really begun to take effect? The guy still won't let go. The mother of five poisons laughs at him and enthusiastically says that all this time the poison was spreading through his veins, and because of the game it finally worked. Zhao angrily asks what the rivals are up to. An old man in a blue kimono, sitting at a gaming table, answers her that nothing, just his magic tool. The chips fall down again and he says the name Minyi. It attacked without his knowledge. The mother of five poisons stands with a man in beads and says that every time he talks about it, she wants to pretend that they are strangers. He agrees with her. The old man angrily shouts at them to shut up. Magical blue and red light rays are flying from a strange silhouette sitting in the lotus position. The opponent begins to explain that during the game the soul of the players is gradually destroyed and its purpose is just to help the cultivators. But for mortals without a cultivator's soul, the energy is simply drained and the mind is damaged. The young man is in terrible pain. The tool is to blame for all this. Zhao is standing next to a guy who can't come to his senses. His head is splitting with pain. Rivals say that even without poison, he hides in terrible agony. The moon is shining on the old hotel building, and bright stars have already covered the entire night sky. The cultivator can be heard asking the guy to finish the tasks for him. There are many large panoramic windows in the room, through which light comes falling directly on Eula, who is lying on the floor and writhing in pain. Zhao approaches him and reaches out with his hand, but he is on his knees shouting, asking not to stop him and let him die in a fair battle. The blonde is surprised that the barely alive guy gets off his feet. He looks very sickly. Eula is sucking the energy out of him. He thinks it's the same as it was in his past life. Death from exhaustion is not the first time for him. A huge and sinister black shadow appears in the room. Purple clumps of magic are curling around her. Her eyes glow with an eerie red light and a shower is coming out of them. The creature grinned at the young man standing in front of him. The silhouette of an old man can be seen nearby. Fifteen minutes later, Eula is still trying to concentrate on playing at the table. His face looks very creepy and exhausted, but he tries to think how to make the right move. His opponent looks even more lifeless. The guy has bags under his eyes. He starts breathing hard, takes another chip and says that he is already very tired. The young man turned pale, but tries to hold on. The mother of five poisons laughs and, grinning, says that he has very little time left to live. Suddenly, for some reason, the girl started up. She really asks Eula not to put a chip and wait a little, even if she stops for a minute. But the guy answers her that he can handle it and tells her not to worry about him. Another 15 minutes passed. An old man in a kimono is exhausted. He asks the young man if he is really a mere mortal. The guy rolls off the table. His hand puts the next chip on the playing table. Eula replies that yes and says that he will show what the power of mortals and desire are, making his move with a trembling hand. It was the old man's turn to walk. Lightning flashes are flying around him. He looks very depressed, his eyes rolled up and falling. He says that he will not be able to win. The opponent loudly crashed to the floor and lies motionless on it. Eula coughs while sitting on a pillow. The ghost of his spirit comes out of him and the young man becomes gloomy. The old man is still lying on the floor, a cultivator and immortal. The guy is tired, but says he won. Immediately he gets even worse, he coughs again and blood flows from his mouth. The blonde runs up to him, takes his arm and anxiously asks how he feels. The young man continues to choke. The mother of five poisons looks at him with horror and surprise and asks how did it happen. How could Eula neutralize the poison? Clouds gathered over the guy's head and half-dead he does not understand how this could happen. The cultivator next to her is all beaming with happiness. They are happy that the young man has neutralized the poison. The old lady poking her finger shouts to Eula that he is a bastard and foresaw all this. According to her, the guy was just waiting for the moment to neutralize the poison. She says he really didn't get very angry. Eula is depressed that he managed to neutralize the poison. An old man in a blue kimono asks the mother of five poisons to stop complaining and asks what kind of games are these. She explains to him that she was afraid that the young man might know the secret of playing with chips. So choosing poison, he drank a pyrotechnic meteor. Eula and the old man listen attentively to the mother of poisons. It turns out that he is the property of her cult, as he is almost incomparable. After it gets into the blood, a person is overwhelmed with energy and in the end it should break from its amount. 
An angry old lady says that during the game the board was visiting energy from afar. This neutralized the poison. A man in a blue kimono lost because of a pyrotechnic meteor, Yadov's mother said. Even the creator of this potion himself did not think of such a thing. Eula, distraught with fatigue, holds a knife in his hands. The young man is stunned. He says that all nonsense and opponents have gone crazy. The guy didn't even know that there was poison in the glass he was drinking from. A man in a black raincoat and with pointed ears says that the mother of five poisons overestimated Eula. How could he have known everything in advance in such a short time? This is pure coincidence. The old lady looks at her friend with displeasure. Eula hears from the conversation and shouts in the source that this man is really right. The mother of poisons objects to her friend and says that the young man was smiling during the signing of the contract. The man in the raincoat suggested that the guy could just be ultra stupid. The old lady looks at him and says that Eula was very calm after drinking the poison. And he also clarified whether the liquid was really poisoned which is already very strange. The mother of five poisons has just realized that the guy has been egging her on all this time. Eula can't stand all this anymore and coughs up blood again. The cultivator is very surprised by this. The mother of five poisons says that he saw through her and Ling Sheng Gu, and the blonde called him Eula. Her comrades ask who it is, scratching her chin. The old lady replies that he was Yu, maybe Lai. She is horrified and asks if Eula is the son of the eternal demonic master Yu Shuihuan. The perplexed young man does not understand who it is at all and asks not to throw names around. The cultivator tensely calls his name. Rivals notice that she is alarmed. Eula goes into a rage and starts shouting loudly so that no one dares to spread such rumors about him. Otherwise the young man will stone them to death. Don't they see Zhao Suli's reaction? Rivals notice that the guy is upset. The young man actively gestures and says that this is not his father, because he is not a cultivator at all, but a very ordinary hunter. The mother of five poisons says that this is it, but a rarefied Eula, full of anger, holds a knife in her hand and asks what she is carrying at all and what it all means. The girl stands next to him in shock and looks at him. The old lady furiously explains that the eternal demonic locally was a hunter before cultivation. He could easily go back to his previous occupation. She says that the young man looks about 20 years old, and that's when he disappeared. The old lady is leaning on a cane. Her comrades are watching her in surprise. The mother of five poisons screams that Eula is his secret son, born after disappearing. He viciously clenches his hand into a fist and curses. Blood flows from his mouth. All the competitors and the cultivator are looking at him, waiting for what he will say now. The guy starts shouting that all this is a lie and a provocation, and his father was killed by a beast. He stands in front of Zhao and says that if his father was so cool, he wouldn't have died like that. The old lady says in surprise that's it and claps her fist on her palm. Eula is already bursting with these words. He is angry and baring his teeth. The guy holds a knife in one hand, and with the other shows the middle finger and screams angrily, because he does not understand what this here it is means. Sarcastically asks the mother of poisons if she is a yes giver or something like that. The shadow of a man with red eyes appears and the old woman tells that 20 years ago the eternal demonic master fought with the master of despotism. She says there were rumors that Eula's father lost and was seriously injured. A scene appears before my eyes, as a man's feet follow a bloody trail, and broken swords and someone's bleeding head lie below. The woman continues her story and says that he either became mortal or died of wounds. And apparently, the rumors weren't lying. The guy turns to Zhao and exclaims that the old lady is lying. Magical purple clots appear from the girl's ring. The guy asks in horror not to take out the sword, because he has not finished yet. He explains that he does not have any cultivator abilities and if that person really was his father, then why did the abilities not pass to him? The mother of five poisons tells him to stop lying, because everyone knows that it takes more than 30 years to master his abilities. The young man and the cultivator are surprised. Eula begins to wonder if he could even get into the body of the demon master's son. But then the guy turns his head. What is he even thinking about? He understands that Eula is his name. Not that kids. This old lady has filled all his brains. The young man notices for himself in confusion. He starts shouting to the opponents that they misunderstood everything and how could they believe in such a thing. Men are afraid of him. And the mother of poison stands ready to attack him with a cane. She shouts that since he is his son, it is his duty to join their cult. Why is he helping Zhao Suli then? The girl also asks Eula why he is doing this. The guy is already tired of the showdown. He no longer has the strength for it. Eula looks at the mother of poisons. He understands that if he does not agree, the old hag will come up with something new again. Zhao stands with a sword in front of Eula. The young man has already neutralized the poison and everything will be great if the girl kills him with a sword. But if she just beats him, then how else can he die? The guy has two more tests ahead and he may well die. Resolutely. He notes that whatever it is with this cult, he does not care. Eula confidently says that it seems to him that evil comes from the heart. 
and not from the cultivator's abilities. The guy refutes this and says that he is a good person at heart and reminds them that they are still not done with the tests. Zhao is standing in front of Yua, armed with her magic sword in a defensive stance. She looks at him in disbelief, fully ready to fight. But the young man says that he will pass the next test and asks if she will believe him if he can do it. The girl puts her hand to her heart and realizes that evil comes only from the heart, as Yula said. The man in the beads says that the guy deserves the title of the son of the eternal demonic master. The young man asks why only the monk remained and what happened to the others. He understands that he is bad at debates, and it will be even more difficult to hold out with a shadow monster, which means he will definitely be able to die. The man with the elf ears says he doesn't care about them. His companion in beads asks if he has made up his mind. Sen Waishu agrees. They both throw themselves at the feet of Yula, who does not understand what is happening and sobbing call him master. Hugging the guy by the legs, the man in beads says that Yula's father used to be his master, and Sen Waishu tearfully claims that he once fought under him, and since the young man is his son, now he is their master. Men say they want to give up. Yula is surprised. The old lady shouts that they are traitors and have no shame or conscience, but her former comrades do not react in any way and continue to stand at the feet of the young man. The mother of five poisons and an old man in a blue kimono are crying because they forgot about them. Yula and Zhao exchanged a questioning glance with each other. The guy viciously towers over the traitors and tells them that nothing is over yet. He makes them get up and finish what they started. But men say that it is not necessary, because they give up. Yula shakes them and tells them to uncover their weapons and the beast as soon as possible. Zhao stands by and watches an evil young man who really just wants to die. Men ask their master to spare them. An old man in a blue kimono, looking at all this, says that he is afraid and asks the mother of poisons if they will stay alive. She replies that she doesn't know it herself. The old woman turns away from the young man, who has already brought the traitors to unconsciousness and says that she has understood something. Yula angrily asks what she has come up with again. The mother of the poisons replies that the guy signed the contract as a cover to kill them and take all their belongings. He was deliberately trying to get everyone out of himself so as not to kill for no reason. The woman calls Eula a scoundrel. Her companions do not understand how a demonic master could have spawned something like this and calls him a devil and a brat. The guy thinks that someday he will kill this old woman. Zhao pulls out his sword and says it's enough to wait. We need to finish everything. The girl, holding a weapon in front of her, tells them that since they have surrendered, they must follow the contract. Now they have to go west. Rivals get scared and confused by such a harsh statement and say that what they expect from the cultivator is strong. Although she smashed them to smithereens, but they have not lost their dignity yet, so they will definitely fulfill their part of the contract. But this is not the end and they will definitely meet with her again. A group of rivals escapes through the door, leaving a white trail of smoke behind them. Zhao and Yula were left alone. The guy sits down contentedly on a stool and says that they have not come to anything and he is only more tired. The blonde diligently returns the sword to the magic ring and forgives him not to behave like that. She says that the young man either underestimated the mother of five poisons and others, or overestimated the girl's ability, because now she would not be able to defeat them in any way. A tired young man offers Zhao to go to bed, but the girl asks him to stay, because they have something to discuss. She pushes her hand into her chest, Yula's eyes almost pop out of their sockets. He's thinking about Miss Zhao. The guy and a girl are widowed, in a dark room. But then there is something around and purple. The blonde is holding an object in her hands. He asks in surprise where she got this thing from. The blonde asks Eula if he knows why the cult of pleasure pursues her. To which the young man replies that she kind of annoyed them with something. The girl brings a purple ball to Eula's face and says that she stole an artifact a sphere of witchcraft. Clusters of magical energy gathered around the magical object. It turns out that the sphere is the property of a cult. It is found in an ancient secret kingdom. With its help it is possible to strengthen demonic techniques. But the most dangerous thing is that it can corrupt people and turn them into heartless creatures. If the sphere had remained in the hands of the cult of pleasure, they would have summoned the strongest demon. Eula touches the sphere with his finger with admiration and asks if there are any more of them. Zhao replies that yes, for example, the soul-devouring flag, but due to some circumstances, it was not received. The girl puts the sphere back behind her chest, which makes Eula's jaw drop. The cultivator says that she did not tell everything before because she did not consider it something significant. Perhaps he corrupted her and the young man, who is mortal even more so. Even telling a guy about him is dangerous. But the girl looks at the worried Eula and says that everything is different now. She had revealed all the cards and now it was his turn. The cultivator asks if he wants to share something. The young man thinks that it's time to tell her everything. If he didn't answer, would she leave him? In his mind, this scene looks something like this. The young man grabs Zhao by the hand and says that it's all about his transfer from another world. To turn on the system, he definitely needs to die. 
Gila comes to his senses and realizes that it's definitely not worth talking like that. The girl is still waiting for an answer. He is embarrassed by her look, but promises that he will not cause any harm, and in case of danger he will die instead of her. Gila says that he has a couple of secrets, but they will not harm the blonde in any way. It is quite difficult to explain this. The girl stares at him and pointing her finger up says that it should be so, because everyone has their own cockroaches in their heads and she believes him. The guy is surprised that this is all she told him. The sky was illuminated by a bright sun. On the road near the dense forest there is a cart drawn by two horses. A flock of eagles soars high in the sky. And inside a small carriage, Eula sits dehydrated from the battles and thinks how the mother of five poisons and those idiots who were with her encouraged him. They ran away as soon as the case smelled fried. They also made Zhao Suli, who was sitting next to him, doubt him. The cultivator sitting in a vulgar pose next to him anxiously asks if everything is fine, because the guy looks very bad and gloomy. A young man looks at her, quickly runs up to the window and looks at the road. Zhao approaches him and asks him to be patient a little more. The girl says that now they are in a safe place. They will soon arrive at the hotel and as soon as they do this, they will go to rest. Yula frowned. Why does he need security? He just wants to die. Why can't we let him do it? The cart, swinging from the sling to the side, rushes into the distance. A huge swirl of dust rises from the movement on the road. There is a small terrace of the hotel with a sign. This is the entrance to it. A beautiful gray tile is laid nearby and trees are growing. Zhao says it's the only place to stay overnight on the way. She notices that it's usually crowded here, but now it's kind of quiet, even too quiet. The girl begins to suspect that the cult of pleasure has arrived to them and ambushed them somewhere. Yula is in despair. His head is spinning and he thinks that he will die faster from vomiting than someone will kill him. Someone's bare feet are walking along the gray tile, on which some bells are hung. It turns out that this is a fascinating saint of the sect. The young man looks at her and drools, but he immediately catches some strange stomping sounds and asks Zhao with fear what it is. The cultivator looks anxiously into the distance. People in black robes are rushing towards them. The guy is happy that the fight and fun begins again. The pink-haired girl stands in the crowd of her subjects and angrily says that the four morons were useless because there is not a scratch on Zhao and Yula, so she herself will have to kill them. The young man and the cultivator are shocked by her words, but the girl asks the saint why she came to them. In response, she says that the blonde apparently got scared. Eula asks if she was hurt. The saint jumps and laughs. Her subjects stand with swords. She says that the six-dimensional formation of the great desire has already been completed. The cultivator also does not hesitate and takes out her weapon. Eula is standing next to her. The pink-haired lady shouts that Zhao Suli will die today. Dark purple clusters of magical shadows gather around the cultivator. And the young man, they seem to be alive, with red eyes and sinister grins. The creatures surround the girl, but she waves her sword and asks the saint if she is worth something. The shadows got very close and Zhao decides to fight them. But then Yula comes running past the focused girl with his tongue sticking out and shouts that he will save her. The young man quickly resorts to the cultivator to save her. The pink-haired lady is very surprised and screams with a frightened face and jumps aside so far that she flies 200 meters back into the air. Zhao and the men in robes are looking at how far she will fly. Soon the lady falls to the ground. She is lying on the tile. Her hands are covered with numerous scratches. Her man in a gray robe approaches her and anxiously asks if everything is fine with her. The saint is trying to get to her feet. Her subjects are standing next to her. Her face is covered with bloody abrasions and bruises. The lady angrily says to kill the guy and Zhao. And first of all, she orders to kill the scumbag Eula. The young man is standing very tense. A crowd of minions of the Cult of Pleasure is stomping down the road with swords to kill him as soon as possible. But then they are stopped by a bright pink light that appeared as if from nowhere. The weapons of the sectarians fall to the ground, and they themselves close themselves from the light with their hands. They begin to be sucked into the magic portal of Zhao one by one. Hila stands frozen at the entrance of the hotel amid the smoke. Miss Zhao recently told him that she was seriously injured, but in what place? She doesn't give the guy a single chance to die. Standing in front of the coughing saint of the sect, the cultivator tells her that the strongest head of the cult of pleasure has already fallen from her sword. She holds a sword in her hands and contemptuously adds that she is surprised at such incompetence. Why wasn't a young cult master sent to her? A crippled pink-haired lady with a grin answers her that the master will still come to avenge them. But then the girl's eyes widen and she falls headfirst onto the tile. Eula notices that she doesn't move. He thinks the saint is probably dead. Suddenly, a sword falls out of Zhao's hands and she also falls off her feet right in front of the young man. Excitedly, he approaches her, takes her by the shoulders and asks the girl about her well-being. Frustrated, she replies that she spent the last of her strength to break through new opponents. The girl is exhausted and tells the guy that even he could kill her now. Hila doesn't think so, because it would be much easier for a cultivator to kill him. 
Zhao somehow gets to her feet with his help. There are bruises and scratches on her face. The guy tells her that the saint of the cult looks strong and he can't believe that she turned out to be such a weakling. The girl explains to him that Shiwi Kingmei is a priestess of the cult of pleasure she can only betray, and she does not know how to fight from the word at all. The door to the hotel is open. Yula helps the girl to walk and says that she is badly injured, so you need to go to rest in the tavern. Someone's silhouette appears from behind and a sword flies at them. Zhao pushes the young man away from him and shouts that he should be careful. He sees an enraged priestess of the cult sticking a sword into a blonde. The girl is bleeding from her mouth. The pink-haired lady stands over the cultivator holding onto the hilt of the sword, laughs ominously and says that she knew it because she pretended to be dead on purpose to fool Zhao. And although the wound was not very deep, the blonde waved away the saint and stepped aside, holding onto her wound, from which blood flows. Ila runs up to her, helps her close the cut with her hand and asks how the girl feels. The priestess runs away into the distance of the city and says that the dead beast is the most dangerous beast, so she'd better leave them now. But after that the saint is waiting for Zhao and the spirit, flying away. She turns around and tells her not to forget about it, otherwise she will use people from the suburb of Duaku as a sacrifice. Hila angrily shouts that they all only know how to grind their tongues and calls them jerks. In the suburb of Duek, the weather is sunny. The light falls on the grass and leaves of trees. Next to a small river, over which there is a wooden bridge, there are houses of local residents, fenced with a wall. But suddenly something will fall with a bang on the brick roof of one of the buildings, glowing with golden magic rays and it turns out to be a long-haired man with blonde hair. His blue eyes have a menacing look, and he is dressed in a black and yellow suit. Clusters of bright magic are flying around the man. People in black robes and a priestess of the cult look at him from below. The young master had finally arrived. He lands on the grass, making various curls. People of the cult do not understand why they show off like that. Apparently, he likes to flutter. The man beaming straightens his hair. Everything around him suddenly becomes shiny and pink. The pink-haired lady puts her fist in her palm, leans her forehead against it and greets the young master. As soon as the girl starts talking about Zhao Suli, the blonde immediately disappears somewhere. The saint does not understand where he has gone. But after looking carefully into the crowd, she notices a man hiding. He asks with fear where the cultivator is and if she will come. The lady answers in surprise, so that he does not worry, because she has already wounded the girl and does not think that she will be able to at least lift the sword. The blonde man coughs and says it's not bad. He engagingly replies that it is wonderful for sacrifice. The man took something to improve his cultivation, but it shook him a little. The saint listens to his speech with bewilderment. He continues to chatter that now he can easily kill Zhao Suli, take the sphere of witchcraft from her and restore her reputation. The pink-haired lady does not understand why they got such a master, whether everything will be alright with the cult of pleasure. A lesson from Zhao Suli. A pyramid with six divisions appears. The girl points to her and explains that the path of the cultivator is divided into five stages from the lowest to the highest, man, creator, spirit, Tao and paradise. Each stage is divided into ten levels, and paradise is the highest of them. Eula replies that he understood everything and asks the girl at what level she is. Zhao says that on the tenth Tao, it turns out that the master of the cult of pleasure is on the first, and the mother of five poisons and her company are on the tenth level of the spirit. A voice is heard, someone is ordered to be captured. There are people walking along the road whose hands are shackled. A man in a black robe is shouting for pathetic mortals to get on their knees quickly. A cult master stands in front of them. Some kind of magical device appears in blue magic and with ribbons at the bottom. A blonde man with fiercely red eyes holds it in his hands, controlling the flows. He tells the unfortunate with a grin that today they will see the power of the soul-devouring banner. Green clumps of their souls stretch out of people. They wrap around the cult master, who grins, holding a banner in his hands. He says that the souls of mortals have been transformed into pure energy. All the people are lying on the ground unconscious, and the soul eater continues to devour them. A satisfied blonde is interested in what the energy of Zhao Suli's soul will taste like. With distraught red eyes, he shouts that he wants to find out right now. Blue towers over the hotel. Nearby, birds sing on the trees. Hila shouts in shock that the girl is not breathing. The young man grabs his head and shouts that she is dead and that he failed the task. The guy thinks what he should do now. He understands that he washed away to go to the spirit, so that the cult of pleasure killed him. Hila screams furiously and looking at the motionless girl says that he is very close to the goal. And there must be at least something. He stands next to the bed on which the blonde is lying and is already thinking about killing her. But if he does this, then the cult of Wenchang will definitely start persecution and tear him to pieces. The character viciously throws a knife on the floor and shouts that the author is crazy. He's about to jump out of Manhua and kill him. The young man looks at Zhao and thinks that when she fell down on his house, 
She was fine. He is sure that the girl will be able to overcome the cult of pleasure even with such an injury. The excited young man realizes that even weakened, she is very strong. Why was one attack able to hurt her so badly? Hila makes a promise to himself that he will definitely be able to save the girl. The young man thinks about how to provide first aid. Looking at the girl, he thinks that an indirect breast massage or artificial respiration may be suitable. Folding his hands, he reaches out to the girl's chest and puts them in the middle. The young man asks Zhao to wake up. He presses with all his strength with his hands and says that she must wake up. Suddenly a purple sphere flies out of it. Eula is surprised and picks it up. This is the sphere of witchcraft, but he throws it aside so that it lies there and does not distract him. The artifact falls to the floor and rolls into a corner. The young man remembers that this is the sphere of witchcraft and approaches it. Clumps of magic form around her. She asks the young man to come to her and says that she will fulfill any of his wishes. He picks it up, his eyes turning purple from the light. The young man breaks into a smile because he understands that the sphere is very valuable and if he steals it, the cult of pleasure will definitely kill him. A picture appears before his eyes of him running along the road, being overtaken by the priestess of the cult and her henchmen, and he shouts that they catch him if they can or kill him. Eula approaches the window with the sphere in his hands. He knows that he can still die, but he has one problem. Ever since he came to this world, he has been terribly unlucky. The young man cries and clenches his hand into a fist, because without Zhao Suli, the cult of pleasure will not find him. Therefore, looking at the girl lying on the pillow, he says that she can't just die and for the first time he will have to save someone's life. The guy bends down to her mouth and begins to do mouth-to-mouth -mouth artificial respiration. Embarrassed, he asks the blonde to wake up. Hila says that he will definitely not let her die and starts screaming. How will he be without her? The young man is crying, covering his face with his hand because Zhao was wounded, not him. He tried so hard, and the girl died instead of him. The guy leans on the bed and buries his face in it. Suddenly, the cultivator's voice is heard. She confusedly and confusedly pronounces the name Eula and reaches out to him with her hand. The young man rejoices and shouts that the girl has finally woken up, against the background of an orange sunset. There are high mountains of the cult of the sword Ven, birds are circling around and clouds are flying. On earth, at the foot of the mountain there is a child like a heron with two bunches and holding a bamboo stick above him. Since childhood, Zhao began to train. She always aspired to become brave and diligent and practice a lot. The master told her that you can achieve any heights only by depriving yourself of any romantic relationship. A girl with a sword stands at a huge stack of papers with love letters in confusion. A whirlwind of bright yellow magic is hovering around her. The blonde promised herself not to seek any love, but to faithfully serve the sword, even though there were many different men in front of her. Zhao is practicing meditation in the mountains, lightly dressed, and a small snowdrift was already gathering on her head. She always stuck to the path of the cultivator, deciding that she could do anything to protect him. The girl is even ready to die for her goal. Memories of a sex saint stabbing her in the stomach with a sword pop up in her head. After the blow of Shui Kingmei, the girl already understood that there was no way to break through the cult of pleasure. She looks wounded at Eula in front of her. A purple artifact appears and the blonde says that the sphere seduces people, turning many of them into villains. As long as it exists there will be no peace. Therefore, it must be urgently taken to the cult of the Mayor Ven so that the masters destroy the magical object. But it's going to be hard to get her back now. Xilai S. Plan There are two paths drawn on the map. Zhao and Eula will have to split up along the way. The girl will go to fight in Duheka and attack the Cult of Pleasure, and then she will destroy all the artifacts of the cult and themselves. But the most important thing, as the girl thinks, is trust in the young man. Can she safely rely on him? The blonde recalls the words he said that evil comes from the heart, not from the techniques. Although his fiery speech touched the girl, but the mother of five poisons said that he was the son of an eternal demonic master who disappeared 20 years ago. In turn, Eula chose to hide his origin from her and did not tell her anything. Zhao was a little stressed out and decided to pretend that she was dead in order to find out his true motive. The girl lies motionless on the bed, waiting for Eula to show his real self now. The young man diligently gives her a breast massage, but the girl does not understand why, maybe he is just looking for a sphere of witchcraft. The guy asks the blonde to wake up, she thinks that this can't be. He wants to save her. Blood flows from her mouth from the active actions of the young man and the artifact jumps out of the girl's chest like a bullet. Yula looks at him, and Zhao does not understand what he is doing. But at least the sphere would distract him. The cultivator was in anticipation of what he would do with the magical object, but the young man just took it and threw it aside so that he would not get in the way. He just dumped her. Does Yula really not know what this thing is capable of? Zhao thinks. The guy reaches out to her and confidently says that the blonde can't die. She understands that Yula really wants to save her. 
The view from Suli's face on artificial respiration. The young man reaches for her mouth to kiss her on the lips. She holds a censored book in her hands and says that she found similar things in her friend's hiding place. But Eula is real. Here the young man tries his best to help the girl and she realizes that he really wants to save her. The guy begs the motionless Zhao to wake up, although he looks strange. But it is clear from him that he does not wish her harm and just wants to help. Eula shouts that he can't live without the girl and won't let her die. But they don't know each other that well, so why does he care so much about Zhao? He is lying with folded arms on the bed, next to the lifeless girl in the sphere. The guy asks why the cultivator died, and not him. The blonde wonders if Eula would have taken the blow instead of her. The upset guy asks why she does this to him and still continues to hope for her awakening. There is a purple sphere nearby, releasing clumps of energy, and the girl remembers how Eula initially listened to all the problems with the cult and resolutely offered to help her, without any doubts. Also, the brave young man learned how to defeat the mother of five poisons and her whole gang, defended Zhao without a bit of fear and doubt. Although he didn't want to share some of his secrets, the guy was always ready to sacrifice himself for the sake of a cultivator. She remembers how he told her that he was ready to die for her if anything happened. The girl is very embarrassed and jumps out of bed, shouting the guy's name, greatly surprising him sitting next to her. She is at a loss, because now it seems to her that the young man really loves her. 